Hello and welcome to AW.1, the AW Women's Division blog. My name is Travis. You can read more of our articles at AW.1. Hit me up on Twitter at AW underscore one. That's O-N-E. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. It makes us feel too sweet. All right, let's get into it. So this is like an audio version of an article we have online called Top 5 Money Feuds for Mercedes Monet. If you'd prefer to read it, you can go to aw.1 and read it there. Otherwise, keep listening to this video. And since it's an audio version, we'll have minimal uh, visuals, so just treat it like a podcast. I've been resisting the urge to write anything about Mercedes Monet, just because if her becoming AW ever fell through, it would age very poorly. And I must admit that while I'm not a superstitious person by nature, uh, I still didn't want to jinx it, and I still don't. But since Sean Ross Sapp and Andrew Zarian are both now saying that not only is the deal done, but we know the date of her debut, March 13th, I feel okay to write this. For the purposes of this list, I wanted to differentiate between feuds and matches, simply because if I were doing a list of top five match opponents, it'd more or less just be a list of my top five favorite wrestlers. For instance, Chris Statlander did not make this list, even though she's easily one of my top five favorite wrestlers in the division. But I couldn't think of what would make a statlander Monet feud unique from a storyline perspective other than the match will bang. So with that, here are my top five anticipated feuds for mercedes Monet in AEW. Number five, Timeless Tony Storm. Despite them both being in WWE at the same time, the only time Sasha Banks and Tony Storm got together on the screen was a tag match on SmackDown where they teamed together and as well as a couple other Survivor Series cluster elimination matches, which is wild. Without her timeless gimmick, Tony Storm would have been ranked high as one of my most anticipated matches with Mercedes regardless. But since this is timeless Tony, I'd be excited to see how this character interprets Mercedes Monet's own persona of grandeur and steps up her game in the attire department because you know Mercedes Monet is gonna bring it with brand new attire. Tony, with Timeless Tony Storr's tendency to go imperceptibly blue, combined with Mercedes penchant for having more low rise cut gear, I'd be disappointed if she didn't make some kind of crack about grooming habits. And of course, these two would have an incredible match as well, but I just think it would be so entertaining and there'd be so many cool bits that they could do leading up to that match. Number four, Willow Nightingale. This one kind of writes itself, doesn't it? If you don't know, thanks to a real life fluke ankle injury, Willow beat Mercedes at NJPW Resurgence to win the NJPW Strong Women's title, a belt which at the time felt like it was very much made just for Mercedes. Our revenge match feels necessary here. I do wonder if the Strong title could make a reappearance, since it's currently being held by Julia, who is supposedly on her way out of stardom, although that's a whole mess in itself now, isn't it? Probably not. In any case, Mercedes getting revenge and calling Willow's win a fluke is more than is needed to get this feud hot. Since the rumors of Mercedes to AEW started swirling, I've always been keeping an eye on Willow to see what moves she's making in AEW and how that could intersect with Mercedes coming to the company. It seems like a pretty logical first feud, but it could also be one that Mercedes Monet gets around to eventually. In like a, you didn't think I forgot about you type of deal. Number three, Hakiro Shida. AEW's ace has earned the right to feel protective of her company and be something of a gatekeeper. If Mercedes comes in as a heel, 
She can act like Sheeta was a big fish in a small pond, claiming that if she were an AW all this time, Sheeta wouldn't even have a single titles reign, let alone three. It's a bit of a birdie job, but it's something that the real character would feel and would force a response from Sheeta in the form of an ass kicking match. This is the type of feud that can happen early to welcome Mercedes into AW, or one where after she wins a few in a row, Sheeta decides that she's seen enough and feels obliged to step up for her company. There's no bad way and no bad time for this feud, and definitely no bad time to see this match. Number two, Dr. Britt Baker DMD. The Britt Baker Redemption Tour will be in full swing in 2024. Too many of her haters online have gone unchecked for far too long. Baker is unmatched on the mic, and much like her feud against Soraya, I wouldn't mind seeing Britt try the same tactic here, to push back on Monet even being there and putting herself over as a day one AW wrestler. Britt can even ask Mercedes why, when she left WWE, didn't she come directly to AW? Why did she go to New Japan Pro Wrestling and stardom? Britt could insinuate that Mercedes knew she couldn't match up. I'd love to see how Mercedes handles this, whether she takes the high road and doubles down by saying she just goes where the money is. Either way, she's putting an EW over. With any luck, this will be Mercedes' first big feud in AW. Seeing Britt Baker and Mercedes Monet go head to head on the mic, trying to win the perception war, would be a true iron sharpens iron moment for both of them. And you know Britt will never give one inch. Number one, Jamie Hayter. Whether this was to be a top five matches or top five feuds, it was always going to be Jamie Hayter in that number one slot. Jamie Hayter had an organic rise to superstardom in AW that I don't think we've seen since, man or woman. She was white hot until the moment she needed to leave for injury. Hayter and Monet both have that all-in connection. Jamie's absence from all-in, both as the company's top female star and being from the UK, was noticeable. Meanwhile, Mercedes' first, and as of now, soul, appearance in AW was at all-in. This match has a year-in-the-making feel, and it should take place at all-in 2024. And it should be for the world title as well, in my opinion. The build doesn't necessarily need to be mazy in the least, just two of the top women wrestlers in the world coming to a head at AEW's biggest show of the year. Although I suppose if Hayter and Britt Baker are still tight, I'd welcome a hint of a suspicion of a Britt Baker heel turn here. So that's my list. Do you have a few that you'd like to see even more? You can let me know in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter at AW underscore O-N-E. Thanks for watching and as always, remember to let the women in your life know how much you appreciate them.